Thank you to everybody on the line for joining today's discussion on how to simplify upgrades and how to migrate into Azure more easily. We're really excited to have a couple of fantastic speakers today. I will introduce each of them as they kick off their sections. Uh, but I'm going to take one second here before we dive in to briefly set some context. So we're talking about some com really compelling functionality in the latest versions of SQL Server, both 2012 and 2014, particularly with the advent of Always On, offer some fantastic opportunities to improve the availability, serviceability, scalability of your of database infrastructure. We've got the opportunity to do read-only secondaries, both within and spanning data centers. We are moving to a shared nothing kind of architecture, which uh, really suits the cloud migration projects that people are working on. And we have the ability to get grouping and failover at the database level in ways that SQL Server hasn't had before. So really compelling stuff that can dramatically improve fundamentally application uptime. Very exciting. However, taking, advantages, taking advantage of these always-on capabilities does come with a number of challenges. In many cases, to do things like uh, support the read-only secondaries, you would need to go in and modify your application. Those kinds of uh, work levels can be untenable or could be off-the-shelf code that you don't have the right to do any kind of application uh, modifications on. There's also some challenges with getting load balancing to work across all these, uh, all these read-only secondaries. It doesn't come in the system by default. You can try to do a script. It's not very elegant. We have ways to improve that. Also, as you're doing scaled out deployments, particularly if you're spanning data centers, you're going to run into some potential timing delays in terms of the success of the replication. So how do you become aware of what that replication lag is and account for that in where you service the traffic? And then again, a lot of folks are trying to move toward active-active operations that span multiple data centers, like we'll hear from Microsoft just now. And having failover that spans those data centers well is also one of our other challenges. So we are really happy to kick things off now with Michael Schaefer. And Michael, we really appreciate you being here and taking us through Microsoft's upgrade that you've just gone through for the answers.microsoft.com site. Michael, take it away. Thank you, Michelle. Um, I am uh, Michael Schaefer. I'm a senior service engineer for the Microsoft Engineering and Community Online Space. I'm on the uh, answers.microsoft.com website. Uh, and the platform that it sits upon. Uh, it's a community support forum for most of Microsoft's consumer brands, such as uh, Windows, Internet Explorer, Surface, Office, Windows Phone, and any other ones. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide for me, please. We, uh, we currently serve uh, approximately 2.1 million customers per day. Uh, it is available uh, globally. Uh, in four data centers across the world, uh, focused in the U.S., Europe, and Asia. We service our customers in 24 languages, and uh, we are a 24 by 7 available uh, platform. Uh, we were looking to make a change in our architecture to lever leverage uh, virtualization and ensure that we were compliant with Microsoft's Get Current and Stay Current initiatives. And that was one of the things that we were uh, trying to solve for as we were moving forward. Uh, we also had some other hardware, and we wanted to get rid of our dependency on physical servers and move purely to a uh, virtual platform. And that would allow us to not worry about necessarily hardware failures in the future. Next slide, please. So our project scope included upgrading all of our servers from server 2008 R2 to server 2012 R2. It included upgrading our SQL server from 2008 R2 to 2014. Uh, one of our primary goals here was to go ahead and eliminate the replication component uh, in the process uh, while we were doing the upgrade so that we could start leveraging uh, SQL Server is always on availability groups, and uh, like I said, the one thing was uh, definitely that the move to virtualization uh, and and our uh, dependency upon physical servers. Now, the hardest part about this whole project was to do this with no downtime 
and we needed to replace 100% of the entire infrastructure, all of the servers, uh, without ever taking uh, the service offline or stopping user traffic from coming to the service. This was quite a challenge for us. And as we were keeping these kinds of things in scope, next slide, please. Uh, we did run into a couple of things that we ran into were that, well, SQL 2014 did extend the number of read-only nodes so that we would span the availability group across all the data centers. We discovered that it did not distribute the read load like we were going to need. Uh, Calling the availability group list with a read-only intent always sends the call back to the first server in the read-only list. This won't work for remote data centers uh, because that means that a call to the availability group listener in Singapore would end up sending all of the read calls back to a single server back in the U.S. West Coast and would defeat the purpose for having the uh, SQL server out in that data center to improve uh, remote data center and regional performance. Uh, we did consult the SQL team on this process and on this problem, and we were trying to figure out how we were going to uh, resolve these. Uh, and at the end of the day, it was became an issue of we could either attempt to use hardware load balancing, which was impractical because it's not designed to distribute SQL load, and it would also require application changes for the solution, or we would have to go ahead and address uh, the service code itself to make it aware of all of the uh, SQL nodes and their current states as far as uh, how they would be uh, taking traffic and when and where, when and where to uh, direct that traffic. The next component that we had taken a look at was just um, creating silo verticals uh, where SQL 2014 does uh, support a direct application call to a specific read-only node, but this created a lot of vertical silos that were all single points of failure. And this considerably uh, makes the BCDR story uh, immensely more complex and it forced us to take a look at maintaining multiple configurations, uh, files for the different scenarios on every server, and then to try to make sure that we kept the right ones in rotation uh, at any given moment. Uh, meaning that if the primary data center was on the west coast of the United States, that meant that the east coast of the United States would have to have the configurations saying that uh, servers 1, 2, and 3 in the uh, architecture would then be uh, prepared for um, the read-only nodes, but if any one of them went out of uh, sync, then we would have to uh, try to address that directly. We can go to the next slide. We can see the uh, architecture a little bit better here. And so trying to maintain multiple configurations would be almost a complete nightmare and we wanted to avoid that at pretty much all costs if it if we could so during this process of the uh, discovery this is when we were introduced uh, through some of our uh, technical partners at xbox and our infrastructures to the scale arc solution and we started working with them as we were developing this process, and the SQL team also were consulted in this process, and they also uh, were aware and had been working with ScaleArc for a solution. Uh, this one did accelerate our timeline from approximately nine months of trying to figure out how to do the configurations and the possible coding aspects down to about four months, which was a considerable improvement. It did give us the failover across data centers to avoid our app errors during failovers. Uh, that was a significant improvement, and we have seen that actually in service today. You'll see um, a little bit later on in the demonstration the mode that Brune's going to do, um, where it actually queues up the right calls as the failover is happening, so that none of them actually time out, and we have seen that 
working really, really well in production today. Um, it did support, it does support, I should say, um, the automatic read splits, and it does provide the geo-aware load balancing, so that even when I mean, you're looking at the Dublin data center where it has a single uh, read-only secondary server there, if that SQL server does go offline, then a European theater will be rerouted based on performance to either Singapore or US East. And in our experience right now, it sends almost all of the data to the US East data center. Uh, the calls are slightly longer, but they don't fail. So that's improving the customer experience uh, for all of our clients. The same holds true with any of those nodes. So it's working very, very well in that, that respect. Uh, it does enable us for our zero downtime maintenance because of those failure capabilities. And uh, we have seen a significant improvement in our CPU utilization and memory utilization. Uh, so the forecast right now in our perf environment is that we should be able to support at least 8x traffic uh, from what we have today. So that means that our capacity planning is very, very forward looking at this point, and we're not going to be running into any brick walls anytime soon. And one of the best benefits out of this whole thing is that we are actually able to use all of our SQL servers. In the old 2008 architecture where we were having clustered servers and a mirroring set of clustered servers, of course, the second SQL server in any cluster is un unused pretty much completely. And anything that's on the other side of a 2008 mirror, you can't even read it. So we went from having 24 uh, SQL servers down to uh, a footprint about eight uh, for this architecture that you're looking at today. This is a significant cost uh, savings to Microsoft and has increased our uptime in the same same process. And with that, I'm going to hand this one back over to Michelle and the Scalar team. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Michael, for that overview. Um, this really was quite the big project. Your Windows Server upgrade coincident with the SQL Server upgrade, plus the adoption of virtualization. You guys really had a lot to, uh, to deal with there.